So today has seen Kieran Trippier linked. Obviously, you right back in your time at Newcastle, one of the best to do it. The next mo- one of the most expensive in history at one point, weren't you? In, in, the, in the transfer market, Newcastle will be having to splash the cash and spend the money and convince players to come with big wages. Trippier looks like he could be the first one through the door. Betting's been suspended on that today. It's everywhere in every newspaper today that he's going to be signing for Newcastle in January. That still doesn't obviously mean it's 100% done. But a man who's played in that position, knows the position well. What's your thoughts on Kieran Trippi as a right-back? Obviously, at England, he's done well. He's now in Spain at Atletico Madrid. Could you see this one coming and, and would you be pleased with it? Yeah, yeah, I think yes and yes. I think yes, I would be pleased with it. One, I think his, his versatility and experience, you touched on it being an England international. He can also play you know, wing-back on the right side. He can also play on the left-hand side as well. We need reinforcements of quality in the defensive line. Um, and he brings that, you know, Atletico Madrid, he won a championship with them. He's been mm. regular playing in the Champions League. Um, and again, he's a player that, that I've spoke about before, about players that we need that understand Newcastle, you know, rather than coming from the outside. He's played at St. James's Park. Even in the, the tough times, he's played up there and still has that memory of, wow, the fans in that first five, ten minutes to get behind the team. And then obviously it's... It's disappointing and, you know, we, we get frustrated as fans watching it. So he understands what Newcastle United is and how special it is. It's not another football club, you know, and I know every club to every fan is, is different. But he understands what it means playing for, you know, one team that's in one city, the expectations that are there at, at, at some, a Newcastle. If you get it right and when you get it right, you know, the fan base will be, you know, right behind you every step of the way like they was with us in the... In the you know the mid 90s when I was the most expensive defender and Les Ferdinand comes in as well and Ginola, Tino Asprea and, and obviously David Batty and Shaka. So you know that's the, the potential that he's, he knows that he's grew he's grown up with that. He, he understands what can the black and white island the Toon Army can be like. So I think with that being said, and also being in front of you know Gareth Southgate as well is another incentive. Mm. Uh, and I would be excited. You know if I, my sh- if I was in his shoes, I'd be excited. Yeah, he's done great in in Spain. The Premier League is where everybody wants to be, and Newcastle at the moment are in that. Um, and you know, part of him coming along, and if it's Jesse Lingard, uh, Connor Cody would be another one at the back who's a leader. He's good vocally. Um, he can play three at the back. He can play four at the back. We've seen Eddie Howe do that in different systems. Uh, but all them three players understand the potential and the excitement of Newcastle United, and I think that would be something that would drive them on. Listen, we're not going to be naive and say, you know, money's not going to be involved. Of course it is. But when Chelsea tried to do it, you know, or began yeah. trying to do it with Roman Bits, they spent over the odds with Didier Drogba and Michael Essien. Man City did it with Rubinho and these players coming in when Mark Hughes was there. So, you know, we're, we're not going to be naive. You know, they're not coming up there for the pure love of the, the game. But once you get there and once you feel that passion, once you feel that that love, it's it's ingrained in you and it can, it can stimulate you and it has a knock-on effect. And... You know, it's it as a, a great pushing forward as a group of players that you can do that. Use that energy from the fans and that positivity onto the field. And Kieran Trippier would be one of them players. You know, of course we want to go and get you know another striker, another exciting player. But let's be realistic. We've got to shore the back line up. We can't okay. rely on scoring goals if we can't keep clean sheets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, it was a wake up call against Leicester. We got caught on the counter attack twice. A referee decision in the first one. You know, give us a little bit of a, a shock. Please, you know, again, why are we trying to play out from the back? <laughs> We're bottom of the league. With all due respect, I know it's not Pep's way, but it's got to be our way. Let's get it out. The, let's get it out from our back line and get it into our forwards and play a little bit more direct if we need to. Um, that, that that doesn't mean we're just launching it anywhere. It means we're giving Wilson or Maximum a chance to get hold of the ball and play. But we shouldn't be playing out from the back because, unfortunately, we're not. Diaz and we're not, you know, um, you know, the, the players of Bernardo Silva or, you know, these players at Man City, we ain't got there yet. So don't try and do that. So, you know, that's another thing that we've got to learn pretty quickly. Um, but they, them type of players, I think you add them and then a little bit of excitement of maybe one or two players that are, you know, on people's radar, but they're not sure about, but they want to come to the Premier League and make an impact. You get five or six of that on what we've got at the moment, because I think there's still some good players there. Eddie's given that positivity and that mindset. But it's about momentum. You've got to keep it going. You know, we've got to keep hanging around after the Burnley result through this difficult period that you've got. Man City, Man United, Liverpool. You know, you've got some tough games. We understand that. But if you can get a little bit of momentum or just be in and around that pack, 
And then you add someone like Trippier, who's got experience, Lingard, who's got experience, Cody, that's got experience, as well as one, maybe one or two little diamonds that you find, um, we, we, we'll have a chance. And I think that's all we would want going into the, the new year, of having a chance of, of building. But, you know, we have to be realistic and uh, build on of, of the success the new ownerships have brought in and just try and keep some momentum going until we can open the transfer window. Mm, and that transfer window can't come quick enough. Like, no, no, it? no, it's, it's, it, we mentioned the tough fish list that's coming up. We want to make sure we're not cut adrift come January. Hopefully, that's obviously not the case. Um, Leicester on the weekend was a, an opportunity missed, in my opinion. But the, the great players that you listed there that followed you through the door, your time at Newcastle, who else could follow Kieran Trippier through the door? And I mean, you briefly touched on there, like a Connor Cody, he would be a big figure out the back, wouldn't he? That could help. A Jesse Lingard, maybe. A bit of a flair player that can produce goals and assists going forward. Any any other names among among those who you think Newcastle could target in January to try and steal? Yeah, it's like anything, my friend. If if we get a couple of results going into it, then 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 the scope opens up a little bit more. You know, I'm not trying to go too ambitious, but Raheem Sterling all of a sudden he's back in the equation. You got you got to look at the likes of Man City, Liverpool, uh, Chelsea. Some of their players that you know play, but maybe not regular that we can get on loan. Aki at the back, who obviously Eddie knows from his time at, at, at Bournemouth, maybe someone like him to come in that hasn't had a lot of playing time at Man City because of the quality that they have. Not because he's a bad player, but they've got Diaz, they've got Laporte, they've got John Stones. I mean, even I'd throw out with John Stones as well, try and get someone like him, you know, to come in. I know, you know, it may only be a loan signing, but needs must at the moment. We've got to look short term as well as long term. So, you know, with all due respect, even some of these players that we do get in a transfer window. That, they may only be for 18 months and then we can go mm -hmm. and, and build from that. So, you know, we're not going to sign someone like we did, you know, Rob Lee for 10 years or, you know, Gary Speed or Shea Given or Alan Shearer. You know, we're not there yet, but we want to try and get to that level. You know, we've, we've spoken about players that, are, as I said, Martial was another one that's maybe not, you know, happy at, at, uh, at, at Manchester United, but wants someone to care and love him, you know. He's a player that's very temperamental, but I think if you can get him right, there's no doubt he's got potential to score goals. So, you know, that's down to Eddie to man manage and go forward. There's enough quality out there. We keep getting this, well, has it got to be a big name? There's enough players that play, you know, in the Bundesliga that I've covered, Liga, you know, the Liga. There's enough quality out there that you look around. What I think we've done in the past, one, the only didn't want to spend, but also the guys that are looking at bringing the players in didn't, really go and do their work they didn't really get on and you know look where we wanted to go and get what type of players do we want you know we want young athletic strong you know ambitious aggressive players that's what we want to be i think that's what the fans want and that's what they've had before so you know that's where the the, the blueprint of newcastle and their dna they want people that are going to work hard all day like they do they're going to be committed they're going to you know never give up they're going to you know roll their sleeves up when it's you know when it's tough times but also be able to play when the time's right and that's mm. that's what we've got to try. And there is players out there, you know. Don't get me wrong; we're not looking around and thinking, "Oh, oh no, there's no one out there." We, we, there'll be players that want to come to Newcastle. Don't believe all these pundits because they've had one weekend in in Newcastle saying, "Well, they won't want to go out there." Of course, they will want to go out there. Yeah. Who would not want to play in front of fifty-two thousand people that are going to support them? Who won't want to play for a club that's going to, in the years to come, going to be challenging, competing? Yes, we're in a sticky time, and that's why I've become vocal about eighteen months ago about the club because we look vulnerable and weak I and mean, everybody was sticking their boot in i'm not having that i live five thousand miles away but I, <laughs> I play for that club and i i was captain and it was honor to play for that club and it was it's still an honor now to be linked with that club so you know these people that say well we're not sure we're not saying we're getting in beppo we're not saying we're going to get harland yet but players will want to come and play for newcastle players will want to be playing for Eddie Howe. There's no, there's no, you know, these pundits that sit there, as I said, they have a weekend in the Quayside and think they know the area. They haven't got a clue. <laughs> Honestly. Past, uh, past Baker on the Metro and think, oh, no, that wasn't very neat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, mean, that's, I, mean, I, I mean, I couldn't believe uh, Agbon Lahore when he was saying people would rather sign for Brentford and that instead of Newcastle. It's just ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous. And, and there's a player that never moved out of his club, so, you know. You know <laughs> exactly. He's, he's, not, he's not the brightest, so, Gabby, but he's, he's, he might be a nice fella, but he ain't the brightest. <laughs> <laughs> 